Everything we know about the world of money is changing, and it's changing fast. The twin pillars of finance, the banking system, and even cash itself face a revolution. With more and more people managing their finances on their smartphones, the cashless society seems to be drawing rapidly closer. Money meet disruption. In the United States, the value of notes and coins in circulation is estimated to be many billions of dollars, the equivalent of $4,671 for every single person. Around the world, we have 3.6 million cash machines. Back in 2005, the figure was just 1.5 million. In China and India in particular, the number of cash machines has rocketed. Since 2008, it's grown by 300%. But as the Chinese economy is evolving so quickly, it also appears to be leading the way towards non-cash payments. Between 2014 and 2015, cashless transactions rose by 63% as we switched to mobile payment apps. Sweden also reflects the relentless move to life without cash. In 2015, only 6% of card transactions were cash withdrawals. There's also been a surge in cryptocurrencies. There are now more than a thousand. The largest is Bitcoin, the world's first decentralized digital currency, which was launched in 2009. One of the keys to managing money successfully is careful analysis of transaction data. To do that, a new breed of digital assistants is being developed, which constantly monitor all spending. These assistants are directly connected to the user's bank and provide instant account analysis. One of them is called Clio AI, developed by data scientist Barney Hussey Yeo. He came up with the idea simply to try to keep his own spending under control. It was never meant to be a business to start with. I built Clio to stop me going into my overdraft and just to know where my money was going. Having a tool that would tell me when I was running out of money, that would tell me when I was overspending on certain things was incredibly useful. It changed my behavior, it changed how I spent my money. I showed it to friends, they loved it. It really resonated with people. This was obviously a problem that people needed to solve. Hey dude, can I get a flat white please? Yes, sure. <laughs> Thank you. Clio is a digital assistant and you connect your bank account to Clio and she helps you manage your money. You connect via Facebook Messenger and you would just text her like you'd text a friend. You can ask her questions like how much am I spending on Uber, groceries, you know, have I got the best credit card rate? She'll help you budget, um, you can send money to friends and she can save money automatically for you. So I've just come to my favourite coffee shop and got another coffee. I'm going to ask Clio how much I've spent on coffee this month. So Clear's told me that I've spent £500 at Shoreditch Grind, uh, £42 in the last month. So I'm just going to check now what that means for my balance this month. And it's, it's looking okay, it's looking relatively healthy. Clio accesses a user's bank accounts and can analyse up to 12 months of transaction history. She connects your online banking, so she only has access to the transaction data. She's not moving money uh, backwards and forwards. It's encrypted, um, but she's scanning your transactions and turning it into useful, actionable information. The app is aimed at 20 to 30 year olds. It talks to users using informal chatty language and emojis. Clio was founded in 2016, but it's a tough market because there are many other financial chatbots. Clio has quite a small team, but it includes specialists in data science, computer engineers and experts in machine learning. They are small, but ambitious. They're keen to take on the major banking apps. The challenge for Clio is to be recognised as a major platform for managing finances.
The future of banking is within software companies. It's not going to be your traditional banks. It is who owns the data and who owns the experience. It's who you trust the most to take financial products from. Clio isn't the only business trying to win your trust, isn't even the only business offering such a service. But to win and be truly disruptive, it needs to grow to a significant scale. A scale to take on the banks, a scale to handle all that personal information, and a scale to make money. The future of banking will also involve less and less actual cash. One day it's possible notes and coins will go completely. Soon the whole basis of banking, the trust we place in financial institutions to deal with our money responsibly, may also be swept away. Instead, that trust could soon be transferred to our smartphones and the apps we use to pay for goods and services. I don't use cash. Just to use WeChat Pay or Alipay. It is convenience to us and uh, I, don't, I don't need to uh, carry a lot of money. Yes. Yeah. 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 India is one of the fastest growing economies in the world, one of the modern financial powerhouses. Although millions of Indians embrace smartphone technology, millions more are deeply rooted in the past and still only use cash. As the Indian economy surges forward, how do you bring these two worlds together? One company that claims to have the solution is EasyTap, a financial technology firm launched in 2011. They have developed software that allows businesses to accept any sort of payment. The first idea was how do we use mobile phones and small card readers that we built in-house to get merchants across the country to accept digital payments. But as we evolved, we realized that that wasn't where the actual opportunity was. Mobile applications were changing how the government interacted with consumers, how businesses interacted with their customers. The founders of EasyTap, all of us have been entrepreneurs. So all of us have come from the Silicon Valley back into India trying to do something. We also looked around and said that financial services was the big idea. EasyTap's customer is a merchant or the government. Our job is to help the merchant accept every form of digital instruments that a consumer who walks in wants to use. When a credit card is entered online through EasyTap through a mobile application or swiped through one of our devices, the money moves directly from the consumer's card to the merchant's bank account. We facilitate that. The firm charges its customers a monthly fee rather than taking a percentage from each transaction. Clients range from major telecoms companies to smaller businesses. They even have a large state gas supplier on their books. Most Indians have cooking gas delivered to their homes. This payment system is shifting from mostly cash to digital. They'll use a mobile application to verify who that person is and make sure the correct delivery is happening. And then at the end of it, they'll accept any form of digital payment. In one project, the entire breadth of Indian community is becoming digitized. What we're doing here in India is taking software and digital payments and digital banking and bringing them together at a scale and at a speed that's never been seen before anywhere in the world. And uh, these projects will, in the course of 12 to 24 months, impact hundreds of millions of people. So that scale is disruptive by sheer size. As the cashless society gets closer, where does that leave millions of ATM machines? Well, the truth is, cash is far from dead. The number of notes and coins circulating in the major Western economies, according to the Bank for International Settlements, remains relatively unchanged. And the number of cash machines in Brazil, Russia, India and China has actually gone up. What has changed is the ATM machines themselves. They're evolving into something far more sophisticated. They're becoming a bank in a box. 
51 years ago, the first cash machines appeared on the high street at a bank in North London. They've evolved a lot since then. NCR, the major financial technology firm based at Atlanta in Georgia, has developed a new ATM. They believe it's going to be a game changer. When I go to the ATM, it's much more vivid, much more vibrant in terms of the colors. I can zoom, I can pinch, I can do what I would expect to do on a screen on my phone or my tablet as an example. I can initiate a video session with somebody at the bank to assist me. It really changes the game for what an ATM is uh, from uh, you know, a machine that dispenses cash to a whole new sort of mobile ready um, experience for the consumer. The ATM works together with mobile apps. People can use a mobile to set up transactions in advance, such as a cash withdrawal. Customers can also speak to bank staff via a video connection. Welcome to NCR Bank, my name is Ksenia, how may I help you today? It will allow banks to offer out-of-hours help or services in areas where there are fewer branches. So I see that you're depositing one check for $150. It'll make more and more of those consumers be able to get that assistance when they need it without necessarily having to walk into the branch the way they would traditionally do. NCR claims 90% of bank branch services can be offered through these new ATM machines. Could this spell the end of the bank branch? I think many financial institutions are rethinking how many branches they have to have, where exactly those branches uh, need to be, and the purpose of those specific branches. The bank in a box is what ATMs are coming to, and you see them in all sorts of shapes and, and forms. But as uh, most of the things in the retail payment industry, it's an incremental innovation because it takes about seven years for an ATM to be changed. So it will be quite a long time before we see loads of these type of uh, machines out in the high streets. With the rapid growth in digital payments, can cash machines compete with new cashless technology? Today there is more than 3.2 million ATMs around the world uh, and every single year financial institutions are either purchasing new ATMs or they're replacing uh, ATMs that they bought years ago. In 2015, in Portugal, there were 1,501 ATMs for every million people. In the UK, it was 1,052. In Sweden, it was 335. Use of cash machines in Portugal remains strong, while in countries like Sweden, they are increasingly moving away from cash. Let's look at cash withdrawals as a percentage of total card transactions. Well, in the UK it's 14%, in China it's 33% and in India it's 80%. How cards are used varies widely, but clearly cash will be around for a while. Between 2009 and 2015, the number of cash machines in China and India was still growing. In today's world, uh, mobile payments, digital payments in general, are much easier to perform. I think many people are beginning to adopt that, um, but cash is not going away. Um, I think cash will be around for quite a long time still. There are so many different ways we can make a payment. Fingerprints, iris scans, voice recognition, simply our physical presence in a store can be enough to buy something. This payments revolution is happening at breakneck speed. No one can be quite sure what will happen, though one thing is certain. We're likely to have fingertip control over even more of our lives. Eventually, digital technology will totally change the face of banking. It will be the disruptor. <laughs>